Today we are going to talk about focus, and I don't mean using those techniques where people say, turn on a timer for 20 minutes and get a task done. I run through a lot of tasks, like holistically ideas and inspiration for you to get better focus, get ideas to improve your concentration, and just really in general, get more things done. So let's get started. Hi friend. If you are a small business owner who would love to grow your brand online, focus on the right marketing strategies for you and be able to promote your business with confidence, then let's connect. My name is Jessica Wanglin. I'm a wife and a mom of two, and I've been an online business owner for more than 10 years. I'm passionate about helping you to create and grow a business that works for your life. On the show, we talk about marketing ideas, content creation, website strategy, and productivity to make great things happen in your business today. So let's get started. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being here today. We're going to talk a little bit about productivity and give you some ideas for how you can actually improve your focus and perhaps concentration and actually really hone in on spending the time doing a task and getting that task actually done. So a little bit of a background, this kind of came about because not only do I like to talk about marketing and website design and all that, but I know that there's this whole person that exists with you, of course, as a business owner. And we can't ignore the things that come into our life that affect all of our productivity, all of our energy levels, and all of our, you know, things that combine really together. That's why I talk a lot about productivity and give you ideas of ways that you can hone in on doing the right things for your business. And focus has become um, kind of a specific topic that I really have been focusing on this year and late at the end of last year. So in the last episode, I talked about how to organize your business priorities. So when you're in a place where you just have all of these things going on and you don't really know what to do about them, this kind of goes a little bit along with that. So it really is kind of comes from a place where you say to yourself, okay, these are the goals I have for my life. This is what's going on. This is this is where the gaps are. And these are the things I need to do in order to get to that place. So it kind of follows along with that pathway. So here are some ways that you can improve your focus. Things to just take some time and do some self-reflection or self-improvement. Whatever way this looks like for you, this is not, of course, a hard and fast list. And honestly, on this list, I don't really go over all of the very common things like set a timer for 20 minutes and do a task. So these are come up a couple of other things um, in terms of ways to think about helping your focus in your life and aligning your priorities actually with your activities. So when you get to listen to this, of course, please come find me on Instagram and tell me which of these helped you. We would love it, of course, if you share the episode with a friend who needs help focusing, perhaps this will um, improve that person's life as well. So what we covered today are ways to simplify your life with an idea based on your personality. Some ideas for planning, um, decluttering, things like that, which helps a great deal with simplification and focus. Um, some daily actions you can take to improve your focus just overall. A couple of mindset tips as always in there and some wellness ideas that help your focus because we know of course that it starts within. So we talk about those as well. And I love that because I never really get to talk up too much about wellness. But if you know me and you've listened to the show a little bit, or if you're new here, um, my values in life are optimism, natural living, um, collaboration, and I love to talk about all of the things that go and connect all of those things together. I run a wellness business for several years. I We use all natural products in my home. And so that's really important, I think, to yourself as a whole and to being the best person that you want to be, right? So first of all, in terms of helping you focus a bit, we're gonna talk about simplifying. Simplifying in terms of like what's going on with your life, all of the things that you're balancing, this can be a hard part to reflect on because we all like to do a lot of things. We'd like to be busy, although I don't know when that became a term that was like cool. Um, it really just means you're disorganized, but think about ways that you can simplify your life, starting with, um, defining your why. And when I also say that, I laugh because I really hate that phrase. So let's just get it out there. When people always talk about this, specifically, it comes up a lot in network marketing, but they're always like, oh, why are you starting this business? Let's define your why. And I just roll my eyes seriously. Um, because when it comes down to it, you know why you're doing what you're doing, right? We wouldn't do this for a reason that doesn't align or make sense. But 
there really is a very significant value to connect the dots between what is it that you want to be doing, putting those things in a place where it reacts and reflects with you every day, and making an intentional connection between what you're doing now to what it looks like in the future. So have you actually made the decision that your goals are going to become your reality? Because a lot of us walk around, and myself included, I would never say this if it wasn't something I did, and this like Lala phase, like, I'm gonna make like $50,000 a month and I'm gonna do like all these things and I'm gonna have this big of an audience and I'm gonna achieve these goals. And if you don't actually make a connection between what you're actually doing and where you wanna go, there's just really misalignment. So that I think is where defining why you're doing what you're doing really comes into play. So first we start with that, of course. Second of all, let's talk about decluttering a little bit. This could be a home decor topic, which also I love because I started as a home decor blogger. I still have that blog which I am getting more back into these days. I've told you blogging is back and it's super fun. I have like 400 posts I need to update. So um, send me some chocolate <laughs> to do that. But decluttering is a really important way to just affect all areas of your life, whether it be your home environment, the items in your purse, the digital clutter that you have, and all of the mental things that go through your head every day. One major tip that I give to people when it comes down to simplifying and decluttering is always take with you when you're going into a space to declutter of some kind of container or box, empty laundry basket, et cetera, and walk through the space and literally take out the things that you don't want and put them in the laundry basket to get out of there. If you just meander and wander around and you have no idea what your plan is, things aren't going to change. So I talk about decluttering in terms of simplifying because it really will help you focus. And this is why your brain then doesn't have to think about those things all of the time. And you just spend less energy, less worrisome time about deciding or not deciding what to do with all of that. Um, that's one of the biggest things about clutter is the decision process and the mental load that it makes for you. So we want to eliminate those things, right? It's just mental energy that is so draining. So take some de time to declutter your spaces, wherever you work, your bedrooms and get rid of items. The less stuff, Seeing those fewer things around your house will actually improve your concentration and your focus because your brain isn't constantly wondering what to do with them. Do you agree with that or not? I would love to know. So third step, craft a plan. Without a roadmap, we know we not, we're not really going anywhere. You don't just like decide to go on a cross country trip and see all the national parks just for fun. You make a plan with it, right? So to make sure you're getting things done, think about what that plan looks like. However that works for you. I'm not a master planner. We don't do like planning sessions here, but whether it's a detailed itinerary or really just a simple list of tasks, having that clear direction is gonna just help you stay on course. Even if it's every single day, you write down three things that you wanna do. I use both a digital planner on a Trello board and a paper planner where I write down all of my things. But in terms of like making big life plans, there those can be things that you should do with your partner, um, you know, or your spouse, yourself personally. Plans come in like all those different areas: spiritual plans, physical plans, um, wellness plans, you know, financial plans, and all those goals that you can have. I do have a whole section of the blog too about productivity. So when it comes to that, you can see other tips that I talk about in terms of productivity and planning as well. So let's talk about daily action. So what does it look like every day for you to actually hone in and focus? First of all, we're going to talk about a routine. Now you may think that sounds boring. Are you the type of person that is like, oh, I can't do a routine? Well, believe it or not, of course, all of our days are routine from beginning to night. Organizing and outlining your day just in a simple routine can be very straightforward. Like you make goals of you eat well, you accomplish one to three things on your to-do list, you do one task for a specific like project, XYZ project, whatever that is, and you make your plan for the next day. And that can be a simple routine that you have. Kids love routine, my kids love routine. So it can really work well for your family in general when you think about the repetitive things that you do. And then of course you can kind of automate some of it. My husband makes fun of me because I automate the lights in my house. <laughs> like I just want one less thing to do. <laughs> I don't wanna walk around and flip the switch, I've, oh my God, twice a day. <laughs> He's laughing because, oh my gosh, it takes two seconds. But really, I mean, the less I can do and automate, then the more energy I have to do the important things that I wanna do, right? So scheduling your day with like deliberate intention, um, allocating specific time blocks for each. Do you do time blocking? Also a game-changing activity. 
So when you set, schedule a set amount of time for the things you want to get done. So you look at a calendar of your day, for example, from whatever, 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. And you put all of the things into those time schedule um, spaces. So it can look like wake up, read for 30 minutes, journal, etc., exercise for 30 minutes, breakfast is 30 minutes, get everyone ready for the day, 45 minutes, and then you work for four hours, etc., till lunch. After that, the next time block could be for, um, you know, after school activities, whatever that looks like in your household. And then perhaps you're scheduling in laundry that night. This could be amazing. I mean, could you think about what it would look like on a piece of paper to have all of that written out and just see what you were going to do for the day? can be really good. I kind of do this, not totally, but it becomes really effective when you actually can picture and you see it. Some people use color coding and all that jazz. <laughs> is next level planning. Um, but it can really work good to time block and make yourself, you know, a schedule that way. So next up and ways to improve your focus. We are going to eliminate multitasking. Can we just talk about multitasking? Now, sometimes it can be done. Like I can listen to the radio and drive at the same time, but some people cannot <laughs> and, or listen to audiobooks at the same time, like in the car, you, you do have to focus on the audio and, and what's happening and all the other things around you. But there really are studies that show, and I'm not, this is bad PhD in me. I do not have resources right now about quoting um, sources on multitasking, but I know that there are studies that say it really does diminish your productivity to do multiple things at once because your brain is hopping from task to task and it takes longer for you to recover to do those things in general. So when you try, quote unquote, to multitask, you're really just slowing down your progress and like in general, like I will sit down at night sometimes and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to put on a movie in the background so I can have something here that just is like kind of keeping me company and I'll put on like Top Gun or something like that, you know, because I love the 80s <laughs> um, and I'll try to blog at the same time. Oh, how, well, it takes me like seven hours to write a post at that rate. I mean, no way. It just can't be done. So that's multitasking. See if you can eliminate it. What would that look like in your life if you could kind of change your schedule and change your practices to not do anything like that, eliminate those distractions? Um, next up, focusing. Be present with what you're doing. So when I hear the, fa the phrase, be present, the first thing I think about is the time I spend with my children. Of course, I would never want to be hanging out with my kids or reading a story and scrolling on my phone at the same time or doing something like that. So being present really is just focusing your attention on one task at a time and training your brain to actually do that. Be all of there. What does it feel like? What are you remembering? What are you reflecting on? So being present is a great way to help yourself just focus. And um, that kind of goes along with mindfulness. Great segue because meditation and mindfulness can also be an amazing way to help you improve your focus areas. So we know what meditation is. Uh, mindfulness is actually really that cognitive skill part of it attained through meditation. When you have the ability to be fully present and aware of what you're doing, what's happening, both of these things take a lot of practice. Of course, it's a muscle like anything else. The, the more you do it, the better you are going to get at it. There's a super great app that I love to use for all of my workouts and meditation. It's called Fit On. I will leave, and it's free. I will leave the link in the show notes here so you can find out about Fit On. Um, and all the, the, I mean, they just have this whole huge section about meditation. So to unwind at night, I often like bring that up and pull on a meditation. And they're great, like little eight, 10 minute things. So co those cognitive abilities and, and the practice that you're doing can actually really help your short term memory and concentration. And there's also a lot of data, <clears throat> and I don't know this exactly, quite frankly, but um, doing things like puzzles, putting together Legos with your kids, following the instructions, doing crossword puzzles, math games, and things like that, super great for um, like cognitive ability and function. So if you know more about that, please give us tips to our audience. I would love that. So let's talk about mindset tips to improve your focus. This is um, you know aligning these things, again, with what's happening in your head every day, where is your head going? We want to stop comparing ourselves. So much easier said than done a lot of times. I've, I've often struggled much of my life with self-confidence um, and comparing yourself to other things and other people, like they say, just zaps your joy, zaps your energy. It is a significant distraction. Focus inwardly on your own journey. We want you to celebrate your victories. 
and learn from your setbacks. So the need for external validation should not be an existence in your life. The only person you need to please is the person you were yesterday, right? Can we do that? Can we give ourselves a high five for that? If you've made progress, then it's a win. So let's then let's talk about other mindset things like learning from failure. Okay, I'm raising my hand. I have had lots of failures in my life. And again, also much easier said than done, but it does take a certain place to be in your head where you can look back at experiences and realize how they were shaping your life. I do believe that things happen to us in a specific way, in a specific purpose. Um, And though in other ways, you're not really though supposed to spend a lot of time reflecting on the past because it doesn't exist anymore. That's also a mindfulness practice. The Power of Now is a great book regarding that spirituality and living in the actual moment of itself and understanding that. Um, So learning from failure is hard to do. I get it. I know. I was let go from a job in my mid twenties and it took me years to get over. And everyone was like, oh, this is just a bump in the road. And I'm like, what are you people talking about? This is a disaster. I have no money, no job. I lived across the state from my family. (laughs) It was a bad situation, but of course it was a good situation because it forced me to do a lot of other things I would not normally have done. My life took a totally different turn than if I would have been still at that job. So good things do happen from bad situations. And then lastly, embrace positivity. Like I had said earlier, if you know me, optimism is one of my top, if not the top of my values as a human being. It is having hopefulness or confidence about the future, always um, reflecting on the good and the things that come can come about because of any situation, whatever it might be. And this, here's the important part, is a choice. Not everyone embraces this choice, but I wish they would. To me, there's no room for negativity because of the way it affects your personality. It affects your outlook. And uh, and we don't know this and people don't want to admit it. It's a little sounds a little woo woo, but it actually affects your health. Everything is energy. It's a vibration, right? You don't want to think negatively. So choose to see the glass half full. Trust me when I say your life will be better because of it. So Let's go into some wellness practices that improve sleep. So a little deviation from business ideas. However, you want to prioritize your rest and get it enough good sleep. Have I mentioned that I recently gave up caffeine? Okay, uh, when was this? Was it the new year? No, my birthday, November 1st. So late 2023, I stopped drinking caffeine. There is a world of difference to your sleep quality when you give up caffeine. It's amazing. And most people couldn't even like dream of doing something like this. Could you live without your cafe in the morning? Um, it, it, and my kids were not good sleepers, so I know what it's like not to get good sleep, but giving up caffeine and focusing on sleep quality is huge for your focus areas because think about how exhausted you were again, when your kid, if your kids were babies and they didn't sleep well, like mine <laughs> and the next day you're like, I can barely function. <laughs> so here's a couple things I do and tips to getting a good night's sleep. Right, establish a consistent bedtime routine. A lot of things you can do there. Journaling, yoga, stretching, relaxation. Even if it's just like putting on your favorite pajamas, you know, bring yourself a cup of tea or something like that um, is great for it to have a routine. Like I said, give up caffeine. Oh, it's good. I'm telling you. I used to wonder why I would wake up at three in the morning every day. That does not happen anymore. So that's great. Um, create a tranquil sleep environment, nice sheets, comfy PJs always go a really long way to help you really in, like look forward and treat that bed space as a rest space. Um, limit screen time before bed. I wear blue, blue light glasses, blocking glasses. If you do use a screen before bed, um, I do notice that makes a difference. Um, we diffuse oils. Of course, I talk about oils all the time. There's a lot of great oils you can use for diffusing before you go to bed, including, um, like cedar wood, lavender, Nutmeg, peppermint even is can be relaxing. Orange is really great for that, um, for focus, things like that. So um, eat well so your body recovers at night. Get enough magnesium. I use a liquid version. Um, and then just do something relaxing before bed, like reading, something like that. Listen to music to unwind can be really great. Then focus. We talk about doing like um, kind of naturally things, prioritizing sleep. Let's talk about detoxing your living space and your workspace. So I'm a huge advocate for non-toxic living. It's one of my core values, but there are many things you can actually do to get chemicals out because they do have a bad effect on um, your endocrine system, your nervous system, um, giving you like headaches, all the things 
Imagine if you could do without that and tune into more like natural products. I won't go into that now, but there's a lot of things you can do and you'll see so in the show notes if you're interested in that. There are essential oils for focus as well. Um, vetiver, rosemary, clarity, nutmeg, all kinds of goodies. I talk about these and you can see them in the show notes and on the blog post where I do talk about this on my site. So you can read about those there. Um, and then lastly, in terms of proving for focus, fueling your body, nourishing from within, getting the macros, getting the right diet. Can you spend some time on a meal prep service, give up certain foods for a period to see what it does for your energy levels and your mental clarity? Could be really great to do that. And of course, working out, exercise, meditation, we mentioned before, physical movement is just really a core part of your like pillar of focus and well-being. So getting regular exercise, walking, yoga, weight training, et cetera. I'd love to know what your favorites are. Um, all of those things can really center your thoughts, cultivate some inner peace, harmonize all the things. And again, I will list my favorite workout app so you can see what one I use for those. But those are my tips. So focus, all the things that you can do to really improve it. Not the typical set of time or stuff, but ways to simplify, declutter, um, daily actions to take to improve your focus, some mindset tips and wellness tips to help you focus to get things done in your business because we wanna get the right things done and have great things happen to you. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I really appreciate you being here. Please leave a rating and review so that helps more people to find our show and help them with their marketing and their mindset to grow their business with confidence. See you next time.